Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. In the last video, we looked at the notion of quaternion algebras, which you could think of as non-commutative analogues of quadratic field extensions. Now, these quaternion algebras are special examples of things called central simple algebras, and that's the subject of today's video. And these central simple algebras you can think of as non-commutative generalizations of field extensions, or at least separable field extensions. Okay, so to start off with, we need to have the notion of tensor products of algebras. Okay, so to fix our notation, we're going to start with k is going to be some sort of a field. And then we're going to consider two k algebras, a and b. So that means that a and b are both rings, and they're also simultaneously vector spaces, and they have compatible ring and vector space structure. So that the ring addition is the same as the vector space addition as well. Okay, so what things can you do? So since they're vector spaces in particular, you can look at a tensor k b, and this is a vector space. But in fact, it is a k algebra, in fact. So to make it a k-algebra, we need not just an, a vector space structure, we also need a multiplication on it. So let me tell you what the multiplication is. So to define the multiplication, since it's distributive, I just have to tell you what it is on a spanning set. So suppose you have an elementary tensor, A tensor B, inside uh, this big A tensor B, and you want to multiply it by another elementary tensor, A prime tensor B prime, then by, that by definition is just an elementary tensor of the form AA prime tensor BB prime. Okay, so that gives you the multiplication and you can check, There's, it's a little bit tedious, but you can check that that actually gives you a K-algebra. Okay, so let's give a simple example of this and the simple example is the following. Okay, so we saw before quaternion algebras and we have Hamilton's quaternions or the Hamiltonians that's this one here, and um, that's an R algebra. Okay. Now you can also think of the complex numbers as an R algebra as well, and so take the tensor product of these over this R. And what do you get? Well, as a vector space, what do you get? Well, that's quite easy to see. Uh, what you essentially do is you look at a basis for this as an R algebra. So that's one i j and k, which is ij. And instead of making an r basis, it's now a c basis. So you have c of this direct sum ci, direct sum cj, direct sum cij. And if you think through the definition of the multiplication that occurs here and see what happens, you'll find at the end of the day, of course, uh, what you will get is just the C algebra um, generated by I and J, subject to the relations, well, uh, uh, the usual relations, I squared equals J squared equals um, minus 1, and IJ equals negative JI. Okay, and of course, what does that equal? That just equals minus 1 minus 1 C. Okay, that's minus 1 minus 1 C. And if you're wondering what that is isomorphic to, of course, well, remember, this is a type of quaternion algebra. And in this case here, what you see is that this minus 1 is a square inside C. It's not a square inside R, but it's a square inside C. So since it's a square inside C, this is split. So this is just 2 by 2 matrices over C. So it's actually a very familiar algebra, just the uh, ring of complex two by two matrices. Okay, so let's look, have a look at another example. Suppose you have some K-algebra B here, and then the A in this case is just N by N matrices in K. And then in this case, I claim that uh, this is also a very familiar algebra. There's an isomorphism with just N by N matrices in B, okay, which is very naturally a K-algebra as well. And how does this work? Okay, so let's just see um, the isomorphism. So what we can do is we can look at some elementary tensors. Okay, and uh, what we'll do here is uh, the following. Uh, suppose you have a B inside this big B, 
and then here we can look at a, a spanning set okay so uh, maybe the natural bases that you can pick here are just the uh, elementary matrices with a one in one location and zeros elsewhere so for example just a one in the one one entry and zero elsewhere and what does that get sent to that gets sent to the matrix which has uh, a b in the one one entry and zeros elsewhere and similarly if you look at um, e12 tensor b where does that get mapped to i hope you can guess uh, so now what you do is you put the B in the 1, 2 entry, so row 1, column 2, and zeros elsewhere. Maybe I'll just write that with a big zero in the bottom, and so forth. And you can check that uh, this uh, is actually a ring homomorphism and also a vector space homomorphism, and it's clearly uh, going to be an isomorphism as well. Okay, so there are two examples of tensor products of algebras, and this is a very, very important construction in algebra. Okay, so let's move on and come to the definition of a central simple algebra. And the one that I'm going to give here is a non standard definition. I'll give you the standard definition as a theorem instead. Okay, so normally this definition would be a result. Okay, and the definition is different, but uh, to simplify the treatment somewhat and to make it connect up with my theme of using these for number theory, I'm going to pick this rather non-standard definition. Okay, so we start as usual with K as a field, and we're going to consider a finite dimensional K algebra A. And what does it mean to be central simple over K? So it depends on the field K. If you can change this K, um, different algebras will be central simple. So it's central simple in the following instance. Suppose you have some finite field extension f over k, then you can do uh, f is now a k algebra, so you can do f tensor k a. And one of the things is that in fact this is not just going to be a k algebra, this is actually going to be an f algebra. Okay, so maybe I'll just go back and show you an example where that happened. Okay, so here in this example one, uh, you tense it with this C, and what you find is not only is this an R algebra, this um, 2 by 2 matrix in C, it's actually a C algebra as well. Okay, so in this case, you'll get something which is naturally a C algebra, and what do you want, uh, uh, an F algebra rather, and what do you want that F algebra to be? It should be isomorphic to MNF. So it's, so to speak, split in that way for some um, integer n. Okay, so central simple over k just means that you can find some finite field extension f over k such that when you do this tensor product of algebras you get now an f algebra which happens to be isomorphic to just n by n matrices. Okay, so let's just look at a simple example of this. And we're going to look at these quaternion algebras. So I want to show you that every quaternion algebra is actually central simple. Okay, so remember central, uh, uh, these quaternion algebras require field K, and I want to show you that it's central simple over K. So I need to find this field extension. Okay, so what am I going to pick for this? So we'll assume here that K is not characteristic to. Uh, so assume characteristic K uh, does not equal to. And if A is already a square, um, so or maybe I'll, I'll write it slightly differently. So what we're going to do is we need some field extension. Okay, so what field extension we're going to, are we going to pick? So F is just going to be K adjoined the square root of A. So if A is a square, of course, F just equals K. But if it's not, then F is going to be a quadratic field extension. Okay, and now let's have a look at what is F tensor over k a b and the key point is that in this case just as in the case of the Hamiltonians when we tensor up to the complex numbers this is just a quaternion algebra but now it's a quaternion algebra over f and just as before now what we see is this a is a square so this is isomorphic to just two by two matrices in f so this implies that this A, B, K is 
and usually it's too long to write central simple, we'll just write c dot s central simple over k. Okay, so that's the simplest example of a central simple algebra, uh, at least according to the definition that I've given here. Okay, so the name seems rather funny. So actually the usual definition is what, uh, an algebra which is both central and simple. Okay, and what does that mean? Okay, so here we'll use this, as, uh, we'll treat this as a theorem instead. So what does it mean for A to be central simple K algebra? So there's a theorem which tells you that it's equivalent to the following condition. Firstly, it's central in the sense that the center of A, so all the elements which commute with every other element in A, is just equal to K. So of course, K is this K is always contained inside the center because it's a K algebra, and if it happens to be equal, then it's supposed to, it's said to be central over K. And the other thing is it's simple in the sense that there are no non-trivial two-sided ideals. Okay. So note that one of the possibilities for a quaternion algebra is it's a division ring. And if it's a division ring, that means that it has no one-sided ideals. Okay. Now, if uh, the other possibility for these quaternion algebras, as you see um, here, is that it's split, in which case it's two by two matrices. Now, the ring of two by two matrices over a field, that can have one-sided ideals. In fact, it always will have non-trivial one-sided ideals as soon as um, the size of the matrix, so this n is greater than 1, okay, um, but it has no non-trivial two-sided ideals, okay, so the only two-sided ideals it has is 0 and the whole algebra. Okay, so there's a big theorem which actually tells you what all these central simple K algebras are. So maybe you thought the non, so the, the way you should think of these central simple algebras, it's the non-commutative generalization of a field extension. So here you think of this A as some sort of extension of K. Okay, and um, so you may think that the correct non-commutative generalization is to just look at division rings. Okay, so um, what's the difference between uh, this simplicity, okay, so centrality is one condition, so the other condition is no non-trivial two-sided as ideals, as opposed to being a division ring where there are no non-trivial one-sided ideals. Okay, so what's the difference between the two? Well, Wedderburn's theorem actually tells you what happens here. Okay, so what are all the central simple K algebras? So if and only if A is actually isomorphic to, so basically what this says is that the the only thing you can get is a combination of division rings and what you see here, okay, n by n matrices. So A is actually n by n matrices in some D for some central division ring uh, D over K. So what do I mean by central division ring? So central just means that the center of D is K and um, it's a division ring in the sense that all non-zero elements are invertible. Okay, so that's the definition of a central simple algebra. Okay, so I want to talk about some simple facts about how central simple algebras behave with respect to tensor products, which will be very important when we study its uh, applications in number theory and also gives us greater understanding of it. Okay. So here we're going to start with two central simple algebras, A and B. As usual, that means that they have to be finite dimensional. Okay, and this proposition says what? So the first thing is that if you take two these two and you tense them together to get A tensor KB, this is of course still a finite dimensional um, algebra over K. It's in fact central simple over K, over K. Similarly, if you decide to uh, take the tensor product of this A with some field extension f of k, f is a field extension of k, then this is central simple, not over k, because now f is in the center. You can quite easily check that, but it's a central simple over f. Okay, so let's do a little example to show you how this works. Okay, so suppose Um, F A tensor K A. So A is central simple over uh, 
k, so you can find some field extension fa such that this is isomorphic to m n fa. And similarly, fb, so b is central simple, so we can, uh, so to speak, what's called extend fields. We can take this tensor product, and this is isomorphic to m m fb. Okay, so if fa and f b are finite field extensions of k. So what you can do is you can find the compositive of f a and f b. So inside the algebraic closure of f, you can throw in f a and f b, and there's some field that contains them, f. And what you do is you just tensor product this whole thing by this f. Okay, and it's quite easy to see that this is isomorphic to uh, the tensor product f tensor k of a tensor over f now of f tensor k of b. Okay, so let's see what happens there. Okay, so what's f tensor k of a? Well, f contains this f a. So basically what happens now is you you can, to get this tensoring by f, you can first tensor by f a over k, and that gives you n by n matrices, and then you can tensor this by with f over f a. So of course when you do that, by the example that I gave you, uh, what you will get is just n by n matrices over this f. So this is M N F. Okay, because I told you how to tensor with matrices, right? So you just put the um, other algebra inside here. Okay, so that's, we're using uh, this example to here. Okay, if you want to tensor with N by N matrices, um, tensor with B, you just get n by n matrices over b. That's if you're tensoring over this k, and then you have a k here. Okay, so we've just used that. And similarly, we can do this with this uh, second tensor factor over here. You just get n by n matrices, uh, or m by n matrices over f, because when you, you can first tensor uh, with fb, and then you get m by m matrices, okay? And then when you tensor that with f, you'll get m by m matrices, but now over f. And now, of course, what do we want to say? We want to say at the end of the day that tensoring by some finite field extension, and I say that this is this f is the finite field extension we want, so we can pick some finite field extension f containing both fa and fb. This is just uh, matrix algebras over f. So now we've got a tensor product with a a matrix algebra, in fact, in two ways. So this is this algebra tensor with that. So this is just n by n matrices uh, in the algebra of n by n matrices. And if you think about what that really means, that's just uh, the algebra of mn by mn matrices over f. Okay. So that's a rather nice uh, situation. Okay. So um, this shows you that, um, that this gives you the proof using the definition I gave you that the tensor product of central simple algebras is still central simple. Okay, and the thing that we see here is the key example that I want to mention. Okay, so this is very, very important. Okay, so here we have n by n matrices in F. Okay, so that's uh, a a um, simple algebra, central simple algebra, and here we have m by m matrices in uh, F, and the tensor product is a very um, elementary uh, central simple algebra, mn um, by mn matrices in F. Okay, so I just want to give you one last rather curious fact about tensor products and central simple algebras, and this involves something called the opposite algebra and more, more furthermore, the enveloping algebra.
Okay, so we start here with A as any finite dimensional algebra. So what is the opposite algebra? Hopefully you've seen this before, but if not, it's a rather curious sort of uh, thing. So basically it's a copy of A, which has the same vector space structure, and only the multiplication changes. The multiplication changes in the sense that you swap the, uh, the order of the factors. Okay, so what does that mean? So we're going to take a copy of A. So for ele element little a inside big A, we could take a copy of that. So maybe to distinguish it, we'll put a superscript A up there. Okay. And so now the only thing that changes, so as a vector space is the same, is the multiplication. So suppose you have A op, that's an element inside big A op, and B op. Okay. So this has to equal something op. And the point is that you reverse the order. Okay, so this is BA op. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the following uh, algebra homomorphism, which is rather interesting. It's going to be A tensor KA op is going to map over to, so the A is a vector space over K, so you can look at the endomorphisms of the vector space structure. Um, so this is the algebra, this NKA is just the algebra of linear maps from A to A. And there is a nice uh, map here. So let me tell you what that is. So to define this, I just have to tell you what it is on um, elementary tensors. Suppose you have A tensor B op. That has to give you some sort of endomorphism on A. So it has to send some C inside A to some other element. So what does that do? Okay. So what it will do, and it has to be a linear map. All it will do is it will left multiply C by A and right multiply by B. Okay. So hopefully you know that, well, in this case, um, here K is commutative, so it's easy. Um, uh, that uh, to, to, to see that yeah, left multiplication by A, right? That uh, uh, that's multiplicative, and you need to put the op here because you're multiplying on the right hand side. Okay. Normally, when you compose inside this endomorphism ring, uh, it's written using function notation, so you're acting on the left here. Okay. So that's why you need to introduce this op to make this an algebra homomorphism. So you can just check through that this is indeed a ring homomorphism and it's K linear. And so you get a K algebra homomorphism. And this is true for any, in fact, you don't need the finite dimensional here, but we're, we're going to soon restrict to the finite dimensional setting because we want to talk about central simple algebras. And what's very curious is uh, the fact that you can use this map to actually, let's give it a name, we will call it epsilon. Okay, you can use this map to actually characterize central simple algebras. Okay, and the characterization is given by this wonderful theorem. Okay, suppose A is a central simple K algebra. Okay, let's see what that condition means. What condition on A is on A is that if A is a finite dimensional K algebra? Um, that's equivalent to the fact that this map here, the above map, let's call it epsilon, the above map epsilon is an isomorphism. Okay, that's all it corresponds to. Okay, so this is a rather curious fact, but you may think that um, it has no importance, but it's going to be very, very fundamental to us when we introduce the Brow group, which is uh, how non-commutative algebra can be used to understand number theory. So let me just give you a rough reason for why this is true. And it's the following reason here, okay? So let's suppose um, we look at the special case where A equals N by N matrices, okay? So here we'll have N by N matrices in F. So I'll, I'll prove, um, maybe I'll just prove uh, this direction. Okay, we'll have a look at just that direction. Okay, so we've got N by N matrices in F and we tensor with its opposite. So we want to look at the uh, endomorphisms of um, n by n matrices in F. Well, I guess maybe I should change Fs to Ks here. We're working with K. Uh, M and K. 
So this vector space is actually um, n squared dimensional. So this is just mn squared k. Okay. So here we have a homomorphism. And um, what do we see? What's the left-hand side isomorphic to? Well, one of the things that you should know is that actually the opposite algebra of mnk is isomorphic to mnk. And the reason why that is true is because to have a isomorphism, what you need is you need to have an anti-isomorphism of mnk with itself. And the transpose does that, okay, because the transpose switches the order. So here, this tensor product we know how to do. It's just a matrix algebra, tensor matrix algebra. So this is also mn squared k. And now it's looking very, very much like a um, isomorphism, okay? And it's quite easy to see why it's an isomorphism. Okay, so I guess um, if you uh, look at this, uh, what do you notice about this left-hand um, algebra? It's simple. There are no non-trivial two-sided ideals. So that means the kernel has to be zero or the whole thing. And it's quite easy to see that, well, of course, the, the, uh, the kernel can't be the whole thing, okay? The identity gets mapped to the identity. So the kernel has to be zero. And now, of course, you can use dimension arguments to show that this is an isomorphism, okay? And that's the, essentially the, the proof to show that uh, central simple here implies this map is an isomorphism, okay? So you do in the special case of matrices, and in general, what you'll need to do is you need to uh, show that, oh, it actually suffices just to show that this map is an isomorphism after you tensor by some field extension. Okay, so I've just, uh, in this video, given you some interesting uh, facts about central simple algebras and how they behave with respect to tensor products. And uh, in the next video, I will give you some interesting examples which generalize quaternions and also introduce the Brow group, where we'll use all these interesting facts to construct a group which tells us about number theory. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.